Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2021 NASCAR Super GT Series hosted right here on Gran Turismo Sport. As you can see, 12 drivers from four different countries ready here for round seven of the season in these GR1 prototype cars. Brand new faces here in today's race, including your pole winner, and that is Jay Sent in the Toyota TSO 50. You'll see the Audi R18, you'll see the Toyota TSO 30, TSO 50. You'll see it all here in these uh, GR1 prototype cars. My mistake, folks, driving the 2016 Audi R18 is Jay Sent, and they have approached the green lights here at Sardana, and they're underway. 60-minute endurance race with the balance of performance settings turned on, so while all these cars very evenly matched, and it becomes a lot about driver versus driver here in these races. Good clean start for the pole winner, and that is Jay Sent. Jay's gone, and... He, even Steven, the two-time world champion here at NASCAR, trying to hold off Ned, the newcomer, who's turned a lot of faces recently and turned a lot of heads. And even Steven, around, folks, has dropped outside of the top five to well outside the top ten because of that incident. And there you see him trying to recover from all of that. But there was contact with he and the outside wall there coming out of that corner. And we stay green. Everybody was able to make it through safely. And there's Ned, another one of these top drivers getting off into the gravel trap just a little bit here. And this is all on lap one, folks, pushing hard to try to keep up with uh, the pole winner there. Jay sent Jay is completely out of the picture now. And more contact made there this time between Pac-Man and Ned. Ned's going to lose a handful of positions. He now goes way wide and off course. Coming into this next section into the straightaway. And he's dropped back to P5. Pac-Man advances his way to P2. Bill Baldwin, the two-time NASCAR Super GT Series champion here in the series, rides in P3. And the Canadian Timac up to P4, capitalizing on some of these drivers in front of him having problems. Jesse Carlson bringing a brand new paint job here to the track this weekend in the Toyota TSO 30 and he's rocking and rolling so far. He's up a handful of positions from the beginning of this one. Running in sixth, Juicy J scored in the seventh position. Scorpion, lone full-time driver out of France, scored in the eighth position. Shadow in ninth and Jack Drum from Great Britain rounds out the top ten. And the leaderboard is on your left, folks. Well, you can tell Pac-Man pushing really hard to try to get back to the, the race leader, Jay Sent, who's got about, uh, I don't know, man, it's got to be about 28, 32 car lengths at this point. The interval would be showing about two and a half, three seconds here, I would believe. It's about nearly the uh, the length of the straightaway from the top of the hill down to turn one. Change for third. Good battles all over this racetrack. The closest one to your race leader would be this one you're watching here for third, fourth, and fifth. The two Canadians going to war, going to battle here with Bill Baldwin. Bill the meat and the sandwich. He's lost a spot and dropped to the fourth position. Time act, the Rolex 8 winner. And Oscar champion from the NASCAR Heat Games has now worked his way up into the third place position. Ned under fire from Jesse Carlson. Jesse, a triple crown winner in the three major series in NASCAR on the NASCAR Heat Games. Looking to win his first ever NASCAR race on Gran Turismo Sport, as is Juicy J scored in the seventh position. The top eight drivers are still pretty much lined up almost nose to tail and very much uh, in contention for the win here today. Some of the other drivers have had their issues and have lost touch with your race leader. And we have a new race leader. Pac-Man has been able to run down Jason and he was able to pass him like he was standing still or sitting still and Pac-Man opens it up to about three, four car lengths now. Been here before in NASCAR. NASCAR races at Sardana and been opening it up now to about six, seven, eight car lengths as they head down the hill into the S bend. And 
Now Jay sent under fire for the second position from the Canadian Timac. And, and folks, it's a 60 minute endurance race. And I don't think necessarily the fastest car on the racetrack is gonna win here today. It's gonna come down to a lot about strategy. When do you pit? How many pit stops do you make? And is it worth the time spent on pit road for the four fresh Michelin tires for the race? Pac-Man leads, former NASCAR GT Cup Series champion, but that's in the GR3 cars here on Gran Turismo Sports. You would love to, to win the NASCAR Super GT Series championship here on Gran Turismo Sport. That, of course, here is in the, in the GR1 cars. It's got one win this season. That came back in round three at Fuji International Speedway. Comes into this race second in the point standings and looking to keep it that way or perhaps maybe advance as well. It's got a couple of drivers that are not really in the contention in the hunt for the championship at this time that are up there as well. And if they can capitalize and get good points and maybe beat some of Pac-Man's competitors in the standings, Pac-Man's going to really have a good day. Jay sent in second. We can tell you the two-time Oscar Super GT Series champion Bill Baldwin has worked his way back around the Rolex 8 winner Timac. Timac back into the fourth position. The Canadians running a strong fourth and fifth right now. There's Ned. Won the GT Cup class in the Rolex 8 and those GR3 cars teaming up with Footman. Footman, of course, out of the USA. And they had a, a winning combination there in those GR3 cars driving the Dodge Viper. And I'll tell you, since the drop of the green flag, since the green lights came on, Jesse Carlson has been hounding Ned for that fifth place position. He's been kind of stuck there riding along in sixth, right there with these drivers. Top seven have broken away from the rest of the field. Scorpion, the driver out of France, has uh, made his way down pit road for scheduled service. He was scored in the eighth position. Uh, when he did that, there must be some sort of problem because I may have said scheduled service. This is a very early pit stop in the 60 minute endurance race. 60, uh, six and a half minutes deep into this one, so quite early indeed. And we'll have to see how it all unfolds for him. They're all chasing Pac Man at the six minute and 42 second mark. begin on pit road 19 minute mark here and as you can see ned on pit road bill bald went on pit road jay sent was on pit road as well i believe pac-man made a pit stop this leaves the race lead with juicy J driving the toyota tso 30 making that rolex paint job look real strong here the number seven car he's led laps before in nascar races on gran turismo sport but yet to score a win here on gran turismo sport and he's being pursued by uh, maybe the driver in NASCAR that uh, conquers all and maybe has nobody, uh, there may be no better than even Steven scored in the second place position trying to rebound from that early spin, qualified up in the top three and rallying back slowly but surely. I don't believe he's been to pit road and that's going to put him in a sequence here in some sort of cycle to make it to the end on a two-stop strategy working the 20-minute mark and he's still going to pass pit road now. Actually, in fact, he's going to elect to come down pit road. This is going to put him on pace to make it a two-stop strategy here today at Sardana and it seems to be the most popular one at that. But the fact that he was able to maintain a good speed and, and hold on for the entire stint there rather than coming to pit road and repairing any type of damage he may have suffered in that spin. He's able to stay on the same strategy as the rest of these drivers and maybe even parlay that into a, a better finish than maybe what it was going to turn out to be. 
Juicy J leads, sizable lead over Pac-Man and Bill Baldwin, but I believe once Juicy J comes to pit road for scheduled service, it's going to be Pac-Man and Bill Baldwin battling for the race lead with the Canadian driver of Ned not too far behind them. And there's even Steven. It's where he came out of the pits, and he's going to be scored in P5 just behind Ned, but he's going to have much fresher tires, and it might be just a matter of time until he can make a move on Ned. There's Jesse Carlson as well in that yellow car, and he's still trying to work his way around the, uh, the machine driven by Ned, and he might be close enough to capitalize if even Steven can maybe get to the inside or the outside of Ned and follow him through. That might be the best way for him to get the job done at this point. Juicy J is on pit road, surrenders the race lead in the TSO 30, and beautiful paint job on that car. First time we've seen it, and uh, he's only the third different driver in this race to lead a lap. And, and so far, Jay Sent, the pole winner, Pac-Man, and Juicy J are the three drivers that hold a lap lead so far here in the Sardana Grand Prix. Back to Pac-Man out front, and that's what the gap back to Bill Baldwin looks like. But a two-second advantage, and it's, it seems to be closing down just a little bit. Uh, the good news for them is they have a very good lead and very good gap over the drivers running third, fourth on back, and it's quite the dogfight that they're having for those positions, and that's only allowing the top two to further drive away. And even Steven doing everything he can to get around Ned, he had to muscle his way by just a little bit. There was minor contact between the two drivers. Even Steven takes over P3. It's now a, an American top three. Ned drops back into the fourth position. Juicy J runs fifth. Jesse Carlson runs in sixth. Tymac scored in seventh. Jay Sant scored in eighth. Eleven drivers left on the racetrack from the 12 that started the event. The only driver out of the race and off the track is the driver out of Great Britain, and that is Jack Drum, driving the Toyota TSO 50. And so now even Steven is on a mission. He's got this entire stint to try to run down the drivers running 1-2. He's worked his way clear of the drivers that have uh, older tires that may or may not have been holding him up there in his progress. And at this point, even Steven has about one or two lap fresher tires than Pac-Man and Bill Baldwin. And he's, he's often the quicker of the three in terms of race pace at, at, at Sardana. So we... We might see the miracle, folks, that I keep speaking of. He just ran a 107.4. He is flying and trying desperately to shrink down the lead. The Pac-Man and Bill Baldwin have both built up. And, folks, it's key to mention, the top three drivers all hold the championship, at least one championship, in NASCAR on Gran Turismo Sport. Pac-Man, of course, the defending NASCAR GT Cup Series champion in those GR3 cars. There's Bill Baldwin, only about three, four car lengths behind Pac-Man now. He's the two-time and defending NASCAR Super GT Series champion in these GR1 cars. And of course you have even Steven, two-time NASCAR world champion in the uh, Formula One cars here on Gran Turismo Sport, as well as a two-time NASCAR GT Cup Series champion in the GR3 cars. So all these, these drivers really know how to get it done. Juicy J running in fourth has come a long way in a short period of time in terms of his speed and his abilities, his talents on Gran Turismo Sport. He scored in P4. Jesse Carlson runs P5, Triple Crown winner in the three major series in NASCAR Heat 5, Heat 4 divisions for NASCAR. And there's Ty Mack, the Rolex 8 winner, going off course just a little bit there. Going to hold on to it and soldier forward. Oh, and problems for Scorpion. He scored in the seventh position. Driver out of France, and he's going to get it out of the way and out of harm's way from the leaders. There was a couple of cars coming through. That included Jesse Carlson, who scored in the fifth position. But no harm, no foul for anybody. I, I don't believe Scorpion has any damage out of the deal as well. He, he, oh, he might now. Heavy contact into the outside wall. Hopefully he can soldier on and battle back from this. But we're getting into the point now here in this second stint where the tires are really going to start going away. 
if the cars are ever going to start handling a little bit and get get upset, it's going to be now and Tymac is on pit road for what would be his final pit stop of the race, I would believe, or he might need to make a splash and go pit stop later in this race. He came out of the pits in the sixth place position. Pac-Man going to surrender the lead, come to pit road. See if Bill Baldwin surrenders second or not, and so far, uh, there he goes, he's coming. Bill's going to make the same move, and Bill a little bit less fuel than what Pac-Man had when they entered pit road. Jesse Carlson now on pit road as well, and this is looking like their final pit stop of the race for all of those drivers, and once again, this hands the lead over to Juicy J, but for how long? Here comes Pac-Man, and mark it down at the 39 and 38 second minute mark there. Uh, Juicy J goes to second, and Pac-Man retakes the race lead. So when Juicy J makes his pit stop, it's going to move even Steven up into second. It should move Bill Baldwin up into third. And it kind of depends on how quick Jesse Carlson and, and Ty Mack are going to be running throughout this stint. For these next couple of laps, Juicy J might pop out right around um, in behind Jesse Carlson and just in front of the Canadian driver, Ty Mack. Time will tell, but time is going to tell as well for uh, and tell us the story about if even Steven can run down Pac-Man before the end of this one. A mistake early in this race really put even Steven behind. He saved the car enough to the point where he didn't need to go off sequence in terms of fuel strategy and tire strategy, and he has been able to rebound, rally his way back, and now he is there all over the back bumper of Pac-Man in that Toyota TSO 50. It's TSO 30 versus TSO 50 here in the Sardana Grand Prix in Wool. Big save there for even Steven, overdriving, going as quick as he can and using every inch of this racetrack, trying to close that gap in as much as he can. Dirty air is a factor as well. The closer you get behind another car, the more upset your car gets. But at the same time, you get some draft on the straightaways from the car in front of you. So if you can harness the dirty air and the way your car is going to feel in the corners, being close to a car in front of you actually can benefit you. But it's easier said than done. And we have a move for the race lead, folks. To the inside goes even Steven through the left-hand turn with 13 minutes left in this race. And he's going to take the top spot from Pac-Man. An amazing performance, an amazing drive for even Steven to get himself in the position he did. And now he's capitalizing and looking to drive away and and claim yet another win here in NASCAR on Gran Turismo Sport. And he doesn't have too much longer to do it, but the problem is he's got an A-class driver in Pac-Man right behind him that's not going to make it easy for him. One slip, one bad move by even Steven, and this can really change again in a hurry. Pac-Man's going to be able to stay, if, if Pac-Man can stay close enough, he can use the draft on the straightaways and perhaps get close enough to make a move Heading into one of these turns, so I apologize, folks. I paused there for a moment. Kind of looked like Pac-Man was going to pit road. He tricked me just a little bit. But at this time, it's even Steven, Pac-Man, Bill Baldwin, Jesse Carlson, Juicy J. Your top five, nine drivers remain active and racing on the racetrack with under 12 minutes remaining. 12 drivers started the event from four different countries. And even Steven is starting to open up a sizable margin, a big gap over, over Pac-Man late in the going. Scorpion with one last pit stop there. Driver out of France scored in the seventh position. Shadow has climbed all the way from 11th all the way up into 8th. He's going to claim a top 10 finish here today in the Sardana Grand Prix. Under two minutes remaining here until the clock hits zero. And then whenever the clock hits zero, folks, in these 60-minute endurance races, that is when 
everyone is given the final lap signal. So if you're coming up to the checkered flag, when the clock is about to run out, the race is over for you. If it runs out before you hit the start finish line, sometimes you could have just began that lap. So you've got to go around one whole extra time. And that's when underfueling the car or making some sort of miscalculation with the fuel can be critical for these front runners. The top five remain on the lead lap. Even Steven is looking to be on his second to last lap here in the Sardana Grand Prix. Check that, folks. The final lap has been given to these drivers. Even Steven is about halfway through the course. The clock has reached zero. Bill Baldwin has reached the start finish line to claim the third and final spot on the podium here for the Sardana Grand Prix. Jesse Carlson has claimed fourth. Je Jeffrey Robinson Jr. in a close battle there with Jesse Carlson at the end is going to finish in the fifth position. Shadow has also claimed the eighth position two laps down here in the Sardana Grand Prix. And down the front straightaway for the final time. He's done it again, folks. The two-time world champ and one of the very best in the world in Gran Turismo Sport, even Steven, wins the NASCAR Sardana Grand Prix in the GR1 cars on Gran Turismo Sport. An amazing recovery. An amazing rebound, and if anyone can do it, it's even Steven, the two-time world champ, defending NASCAR GT Cup Series champion as well. What a show, what a drive, and congratulations to even Steven. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.